Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet. Hello from Tuskegee, Alabama. We're here at the World Mayor's Conference organized by the Honorable Johnny Ford. The Reverend Jesse Jackson spoke today and we've been discussing at this conference how to move the world forward how to eliminate a lot of things that are injustices and that need to change in the world. And we're very honored to have with us the mayor of Hobson, Alabama, Alberta McCrory. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, thank you so very much for giving me this opportunity to, uh, for this interview. Uh, this has certainly been a remarkable day uh, listening to Jesse Jackson. I've heard him several times, but he's always just very, very on target uh, and has so much information and such a powerful person uh, to be here in our presence today. Uh, you can never listen to him and not learn something, not be motivated to go home to try to make those changes that you see are necessary in your community so that we can all uh, live better lives and uh, have an equal share of participating in the democracy of this country. So uh, it's, it was uh, just a good opportunity to hear him again. I hear him every Saturday morning uh, on uh, one of my local TV stations. Uh, he's out of Chicago, so I, didn't, uh, I knew yesterday that he would be here, so it was just very good to see him today and to hear him as well. Absolutely. He was... always has a message for the nation. Absolutely. As I, as I saw today, he uh, has a lot of humor, has a lot of strength, and uh, you know he commands a lot of attention. You're so right. Right, even with you know his illness with the Parkinson's, uh, it has not affected his uh, his mind. He's very you know alert and uh, very academic and very informed. Uh, he's a man who has done his research and uh, he's able to relay that to the people. So it comes across very well in spite of his any health challenges that he may have. Absolutely. And I wanted to ask you as a mayor, it's a pleasure to be with you and all the mayors because, you know, I, I, the concept of this conference where the mayors are uniting is to me, I think, very important because the mayors are in a section of the, the country and the world, really, where you're really in tune to your area. So, you know, when you get too far up the scale, you tend to lose some of the insight of each area. And each area has their particular needs or challenges. So what I was going to ask you, as the mayor of Hobson, uh, what do you feel uh, and that you see in your community needs to happen or needs to change? Uh, our community has, has been one of those communities. We are the first incorporated African-American city in the state of Alabama, established in 1899. Congratulations. And so we were there, you know, for all of the Jim Crow, all of the racism, but, you know, we're still thriving. And, and that's the good thing. And we've been overlooked for so long and underserved for so long. In fact, uh, just a few months ago, uh, we established two funds with a local community foundation because we decided that we have to get out here and raise money for our community so that we can do some things because we don't get a lot of the federal funds. I think our city will end up maybe with about $200,000 of uh, the recovery monies that went out. And while other cities are getting millions of dollars, and so these small towns are really getting very little, and it looks like nobody seems to care about the small towns. And if you are a black small town, then you are really struggling. 
And that's one of the reasons I like Mayor Ford and his concept, because when he became mayor of Tuskegee back in the early 70s, he and Reverend Judge Stringer, who was my uh, pastor and mayor in Hobson City, and about five or six other black mayors in Alabama got together and organized the Alabama Conference of Black Mayors. And that later became the National Conference of Black Mayors, and then they became the World Conference of Mayors. Uh, several years ago, uh, I met another mayor from a black town. His name was, um, I can't think of his name, but he was from Eatonville, Florida. Mayor Bruce Mount, his name just had to come to me. And a gentleman in Texas who had done a lot of research on black towns saw that we all had the same problem, underserved, overlooked, you know, just not having the resources that we needed. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, even with federal funds like USDA monies, uh, monies for streets and the other things that um, Department of Commerce, the monies that they have, that it wasn't getting into our communities. Mm -hmm. So that's why we organized the Historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance. And I had gone to the National Conference of Black Mayors, and may have been my first conference that I went to in Atlanta that I met Bruce Mount and the gentleman from Texas who was, uh, who had done a lot of research on black towns, had suggested to Bruce Mount that the rest of us get together and we organize so that we could leverage some support for our communities. So when we were at that conference and I met Bruce Mount, I knew Mayor Ford already, so I went to Mayor Ford and told him what the gentleman had told us, because at that time, the gentleman by the name of Everett Fly, is his name, had come to Hobson City because he heard about us, and then we, he contacted us. Uh, someone had read about Hobson City uh, in the newspaper because the power had been cut off at City Hall. There were a lot of financial problems at that time. And there was an article that went out in the paper that hit the national news. And there were articles in papers across the country about heydays past and gone and, you know, the suffering of the black town. And the Alabama Historical Commission placed us on their list of ten places in peril. Now, they usually place buildings on that list. Or, but this time, they placed the whole city on the list of ten places in peril. And this happened in 2008. And I'm not sh uh, so I did not really meet with Mayor Ford until about three or four years later when we were in Atlanta. And uh, so I shared with Mayor Ford what this gentleman had shared with us because he came through us after reading about us and we were able to get together and some council members and citizens paid his way to come from Texas to Hobson City to meet with us. And, he suggested that we organize. And when I told Mayor Ford, he immediately called us together. And when I say us, he called the mayors of four historically black towns, uh, Ed Jones from Grambling, Louisiana, me, Everett McCrory from Hobson City, Daryl Jones from Mount Bayou, and he called uh, Bruce Mount, and I'm not sure if Bruce came, but I know Ms. N. Wadner Theory, who is the organizer and the person behind the Zoro and Hurston Festival. She came, and we met here in Tuskegee with Mayor Ford. Met here, uh, may have been this office. And at that time, we organized the Historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance. And so we came under uh, the World Conference of Mayors. Uh, came along with where Mayor Ford brought us, those of us who were mayors, into the World Conference of Mayors. And that has been a tremendous uh, organization for us to network, to meet people like yourself, who has a service and provides a need in our communities. Otherwise, had I not come today, I would not have met you. And you are working to eradicate drugs in our communities and educate people about the effects of drugs. I was just looking at your pamphlet yesterday when we were at the game, uh, and sometimes we don't even take into consideration. Uh, we think about uh, drugs as being, you know, heroin and cocaine. Uh, we don't think about the marijuana, uh, the ecstasy, uh, the alcohol, even alcohol. 
Uh, we know that in our communities, uh, I know in my particular community, I really don't know all of the different kinds of drugs that are out there. I know that marijuana is a, a, a main drug that's being sold in our community. And when I was growing up, I heard about drugs later in life, and more so after many of the soldiers started coming home from Vietnam. And we just saw that sale of drugs and use of drugs just escalate in our communities. We can tell the effects, not just by looking at the number of young black men and women who have been incarcerated as a result of selling drugs. We look at the lives that have been lost by young men who have been either on drugs, killing someone about, you know, uh, because they were on drugs, or killing someone because of their money, or, you know, people claiming territory when you don't even own the land, you don't own the sidewalk, but you're killing somebody about being on your turf. And uh, when I see our young black men not either going to college, not getting a job, not going to the military, not trying to make their lives better, all because of drugs. And I can imagine that just about every family that I know has been affected in some way by drugs. And when I look at the devastation in our community, uh, even being black, uh, we always strive to do better, to be better, to maintain homes, uh, to have a job, uh, to live just like everybody else. But I've seen that all change in the last 30, 40 years. It has gotten even worse the last 20 or so years. When I see families that will have three or four sons incarcerated at the same time because uh, of selling drugs. And then when it comes to uh, getting money to help in communities uh, with the, the prison reentry program, uh, we, we have a program there in my community, but the programs are not doing enough. And I didn't know that prison reentry programs were even out there. And when I started looking for a prison reentry program in my community, they were, most of them were at white churches that were not in our community. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't have um, a strong financial backing already, uh, you don't have the people with the skills and uh, the education to operate programs, and you've got to go into other cities, neighboring cities if you have so, uh, to get the services that you need. And, and by the time it piddles down to really serving the people where you are, they don't get served. And I know that, you know, there are programs out there, there are pamphlets out there, but we've got to do more than pamphlets. We've got to get to our children at an earlier age. And we've got to get to the mothers. And I say mothers because a mother carries a child nine months before the rest of the world sees that child. And so if the mother has taken care of herself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and taking care of that baby that is to be born, you know, playing the music, reading to your child, doing all those things to help prepare and bring that child into this world, and know that you have a commitment from day one, from the time that that child is conceived, up until, you know, that child is 18 or 19 years old, and then even when they get older, you know, we still have some responsibility to our children because we bring them into this world. And so I, and as a minister, I left home uh, maybe in my 30s. And uh, when I would come back home on the weekend, I was just a little bit up the road in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we are about 100 miles or so from Atlanta. And then I started coming home and I hear all these stories about what happened to this young man, or what happened to that one, what happened to this girl, what happened to that one. Uh, this one is on drugs, so that one is on drugs. It's just really devastating. So when I went to seminary, and I came back home and I just was really just hopeful that I was going to be able to come in and talk to some people and be able to make some changes and uh, get some people saved. <laughs> baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, so to get them away from the drugs, it's, it's, it's something that's more powerful than that. And that, and, and not saying that God can't use me and do what he 
wants to do to help deliver people in that area. But I haven't figured out a way how, and maybe that's something that I'm still working at, uh, and, and, and asking God for some guidance and help in that way. How do we reach people? You know, we can share the word. That's if they want to hear the word. But we have got to be able to reach our young men and women who are on that wrong path, uh, even, I mean, at an early age. And we've got to be able to reach those mothers and fathers because I hear the mothers. I see them when their sons and their daughters are killed. Uh, and one of the things that we don't like to talk about, we, we don't like to talk about our young black men killing other young black men, but they're killing mothers' sons and sisters' brothers and children's fathers. Absolutely. And we've got to talk about it if we're going to make some changes, if we're going to have some better lives for all of our children, and if our children are going to have an opportunity to live out their life. I have gone to too many funerals of young black men who've been killed at the hands of other young black men. And more often it's because it is drug related. Right. And so uh, we have to start mm -hmm. educating not only uh, the children at an early age, but reaching these mothers and that drug education piece has to be part of as, as they're preparing to bring that child into the world, uh, to make sure that they are prepared, that they know the consequences, because they see it every day. And so when you see it, what is it that makes you think that it's not going to happen to you? If you don't make an effort to not make it happen. Exactly. And so I, 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 we have churches. You know, Mayor, let me let me say one thing to uh, as an answer to what you're asking. And first of all, I just want to acknowledge something that I'm seeing as I speak with you. Um, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I can see that in the next few years, aside from being the mayor of Hobson, that probably you're going to rise to some very important position. And it's not because you aspire to be well-known, but because you're your concern for uh, these people in the community, regardless of who they are or where they come from, that doesn't make a difference to you. Mm -hmm. You just want them to get better. So first of all, I want to say is I can really see that you're going to rise to some important position, which is very good, because you're going to have some sanity in that position that you'll give, that will come out of you. Second thing I was going to tell you is that uh, what we can do in your town is Drug Free World is not just a program for drug education. It can actually be utilized in your elementary schools and right from the beginning. It has a curriculum that I will get to you. And uh, you can get your local principals of the different schools mm -hmm be taught in all grades. Obviously the approach will be different in elementary than it will be in middle, than it will be in high school. Uh, but it doesn't make any difference. The program can also be can used in churches, in temples, any religion. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with religion because we're all against drugs. Any parent doesn't want their child on drugs. So the this drug education program from Foundation for Drug Free World is made so it can be implemented just like at mathematics, mm -hmm. just like arithmetic, just like English, just like history. And you made a very good point is, you know, and this is a point that I realized much later on is I said, why didn't somebody when I was little educate me not on English and math, but on how to understand about drugs, how to understand about situations that are going to be difficult for me, how to understand about what human beings are really like not supposedly what I thought as a mm -hmm. child, but what is real and how to handle it so that I would have skills for life, skills to avoid, like you said, getting into a conflict because when emotions heat up, anybody, if they don't really have that skill set, anyone could get violent. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it doesn't really matter. It's not a sexual thing. I don't think it's that the women or men are different. 
anyone can get mad when they're not happy with something. Mm -hmm. So your points are really well taken and I want you to know, because this is more than just an interview and the reason we're all here at this conference is to resolve what's going on in the world. And for those people who are gonna watch this video, mm -hmm. it's important that they realize that you too can do something and that this program, first of all, it's free. So people always complain about economics, but this program is free. Why is it, and let's talk about why it's free, because some of you may want to donate, mm -hmm. and by all means, if you want to donate to Drug Free World Americas, and I don't have the link off the top of my head, but you could probably find it online, and you could donate. And um, why? Because the program is free, because people like you and me and others have donated. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't come out of the air. It has to be appropriated for. It'd be nice to have the government appropriate. Right now, it's not doing that. It appropriates mm -hmm. for rehabilitation. But the problem is twofold. The rehabilitation is already late because they already are on drugs. And number two, a lot of these rehabilitations, the person ends up on methadone. And I, as a doctor of 40 mm -hmm. years, I don't consider that really a high standard. I, okay, it's a type, maybe. I don't know how much it is. Mm -hmm. But to have someone on methadone for the rest of their life, which is a narcotic, to me, I think is not really mm -hmm. a rehabilitation for that person. But by doing the drug education, like you said, now they can prevent them from going there in the first place. And so I really, I look forward to getting you the material in your okay. town and let's get it, let's get it into your school system. Yes. Let's get it applied. Let's get it applied early. Uh, our, our organization will be more than happy to train your teachers. Uh, you know, the teachers are very, very, uh, you know, they have a tremendous knowledge already. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the other thing while we're making this video, because the teachers may want to watch this video. By no means do I think I know as a surgeon how to be a great teacher in a school with, with kids of elementary or high school or junior high. You know better than I do. But that's not the point. The point is to take what you already know and now to give a piece of, it's called, in dentistry, it's called armamentarium. It's like something that you can utilize an armament, like you go to war, you need a rifle, you know how to shoot the rifle so you don't get killed. Well, we don't want our kids to get killed by drugs, and the teachers can teach them, and they already have the knowledge. All they need now is, let me have the tool to teach the students, and that's what Drug Free World is. It's a, it's a tool. It covers all the drugs, and it empowers all these kids. So I wanted to give you an answer so that when you leave today, and I, I'm very happy that you took the time because I can see why we should have gotten together, and we can definitely do that. And uh, by doing that, unite all the mothers, like you said, and uh, get the mothers there to feel comfortable so that they then, possibly, this is an idea that I want to share, maybe Drug Free World will start a mother's group. Okay. And that mother's Sounds group great. will be cutting across all religions, races, and creeds, because all mothers don't want their kids on drugs. No. Right? And imagine, if they all united and they're all working for their kids and they're all in a room together, an auditorium together, or they get in Alabama together and they're all there, the white women, the black women, the Chinese women, the Indian women, and they all see that they're fighting for their kids, mm -hmm. I personally feel that they're going to start developing relationships. They're going to say, you know what, Susie May, what's that, Carol? Well, I don't think this should happen. Carol will say, you know what? I agree with you. I'm going to speak to my husband. I don't know where his head's been on. And she'll be the w wife of some political mm -hmm. leader. And she'll get his head on straight. What do you think yeah, about that? Yeah, absolutely. Sounds great. Sounds great. And uh, we'll talk about this. And I do want you to come to Hobson City. But before you get there, I'm just thinking about how you can get there real soon. Because right now we're working with a youth group with the Health Literacy Pro uh, Project. Well, Mayor, it's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to Certainly a pleasure, and I, I, you will hear from me. Yeah, we're you know, going to definitely get this going. I, I will hear from you. <laughs> Absolutely. And so this is a great opportunity. I'm looking forward to doing some things in our community. Absolutely. Um, and one the, thing I wanted to say to you also is, since you are a, a minister of religious faith or pastor, uh, you probably know others. The other thing that I think needs to be established is really for all religious leaders is the ability to know about this drug-free world because it's affecting all their congregations, their communities, keeping people away. So mm -hmm. I look forward to doing with that. I, I with can you. I can handle that on my end. Good. I can I can handle that. I have a good, pretty good working relationship with the uh, pastors in my area and the surrounding areas. Uh, I know most of them, 
and uh, they may not know me, but I know them, but I know enough black pastors and white pastors to uh, bring us together and uh, have us to uh, have a meeting and discuss this program and get the help that we need from our ministers and from our churches in the community. I don't have any doubt that I can't do that. Very good. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. And like Johnny says, you know, Johnny Ford says, we're together. Yeah, right. We're together. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on, let your feet.